okay so welcome to lecture number 14 <clears throat> so uh, today we are going to discuss uh, some basics of nonlinear optics uh, this is needed because for the uh, for, for our next part of this uh, uh, these these lectures we want to get into studying the two photon fields and the two photon coherence and so on uh, but before we get started with nonlinear optics let's look at what we did in lecture number 13 so in lecture number 13 we essentially did the transition from classical coherence to uh, quantum coherence that is classical wave mechanics to quantum mechanics and there we saw that the idea of the field in classical wave mechanics is quite analogous to the uh, concept of pure state in quantum mechanics Similarly, the uh, correlation functions uh, in quantum uh, in, in classical wave mechanics, uh, this is very similar, very analogous to the concept of mixed state within quantum mechanics. So, if you take the example of uh, the this orbital angular momentum state, <coughs> then uh, we write a field uh, in the uh, in the angle basis. We can write a field in the angle basis. Uh, in terms of the uh, fields in the orbital angular momentum basis and that is the, uh, uh, the representation and where this represents a coherent sum if this is a if, if, if there is no randomness in the field. Uh, similarly, in quantum mechanics we can write this uh, uh, as, as uh, like a state in terms of this ket vector and this ket vector is in terms of this orbital angular momentum ket vectors and this represents again a coherent sum. But if there is a randomness in the system, then this becomes just a, a, a symbolic representation. But the, and then in that case, one uh, essentially works with the correlation function. The correlation function uh, in the angle basis is defined as v star phi one, v phi two, and the ensemble average. And if we go by this expression for v phi, uh, then this w phi one phi two, that is a cross particle density function in angle, uh, can be represented like this. Now, analogously in quantum mechanics, we write the uh, when there is uh, randomness uh, in the system and this is this this randomness in is in addition to the intrinsic randomness that a quantum system already has. So, so when there is just the intrinsic randomness, we represent the state uh, by a pure uh, in, the, in terms of a pure state, but when there is additional uh, randomness, then we represent the state by a mixed state and this is how it is represented in quantum mechanics. Uh, that is a psi psi outer product and then the ensemble average of that and if we use this representation uh, for psi then that is how we represent. Now, if we take the uh, uh, the uh, matrix element of this row this density matrix then we see that this is uh, alpha L1 alpha L2 start that is ensemble average and then we get this phi 1 L1 phi uh, L2 phi 2. And this is essentially the uh, angle representation of the orbital angular momentum mode and then this phi 1 L1 is, is essentially e to the minus i L1 phi 1 and so this matrix element we can <coughs> represent like this. So, we see that the uh, density matrix element and this cross correlation function uh, they are doing pretty much an analogous uh, job. Okay, so we also looked at, uh, I mean we know that the expectation value of an operator uh, uh, for a pure state is, is given like this where A is the operator and psi is the state. So, the expectation value of the operator is psi A psi, but if it is a mixed state then the expectation value is given by the average value of the expectation value and this is the ensemble average and this we showed last time that this is equal to the trace of rho times A. Okay. Then in, uh, in, in the classical mechanics we have the concept of intensity, but in quantum mechanics we do not have the concept of intensity. The, the analogous concept we have is the photon absorption probabilities that one asks the question as to what is the probability that of, of detecting a photon at some location r at time t. So, so, instead of asking what is the intensity in quantum mechanics we ask what is the probability uh, for detecting a photon at location r and at time t. And this we uh, uh, showed that it can actually be uh, given by uh, this expression. So, of course, this extra ensemble average is when the field is uh, mixed, but just, just this uh, the first uh, uh, expectation value when the field is pure and E minus and E plus these are the positive and uh, negative and the positive frequency parts of the field. And of course, uh, just like here we can represent this quantity also as uh, trace of rho times this quantity. 
So, uh, uh, so this photon absorption probability this is analogous to the concept of intensity. Similarly, we have uh, we, 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 we have correlation in quantum mechanics and that is represented in terms of this g, g function g1. Uh, so, this represents a correlation in the field uh, uh, between the field points at r1, t1, r2, t2 and is calculated uh, like this. So, i is the state and e minus and e plus these are the negative and frequency uh, positive frequency parts of the field at r1 t1 and r2 t2. So, that this 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 basically represents the correlation uh, between the states or the field at uh, r1 t1 r2 t2. Now, in quantum mechanics we can uh, here we have asked this question as to what is the uh, probability of detecting one photon we can also uh, again. So, th this ensemble average is just uh, this uh, trace of this quantity. Uh, uh, this is this is pretty much the same as you know every time this is second ensemble average is trace of rho times whatever is the operator. So, and now in quantum mechanics we can also ask this question as to what is the probability of detecting one photon at r1 t1 and another photon this, that is a second photon at r2 t2. We do not have an analogous um, uh, question in, in, in classical uh, wave mechanics. So, this quantity uh, is is given by this e minus r1 t1 e minus r2 t2 e plus r1 t1 e plus r2 t2 and then this ensemble average again we can write this as uh, the row density matrix times this is the operator. So, once we now now that we have two photons in the system we can ask the coincidence probability uh, we can have now a four point correlation function just like for one photon we have two point correlation function when, when we have two photon detection one can have four point correlation function. And uh, uh, just like this it is given by e minus r1 t1 e minus r2 t2 e plus r3 t3 and e plus r4 t4 and so on. Okay, so, we will be using these quantity coincidence and four point correlation as we study two photon coherence and two photon interference. But uh, uh, before we do that we I, I want to uh, kind of uh, uh, get into a, uh, the at least one physical process that produces such field. And the one way of doing it to go to the nonlinear optics uh, that is where we can produce these two photon uh, fields. Okay, so, let us just first go through the uh, very basics of uh, nonlinear optics. Uh, so, first of all the Maxwell's equation inside a medium uh, is given by these four equations <coughs> where E is the electric field and D is the electric displacement sensor. These two are related by uh, uh, this expression where d is epsilon naught e plus p, epsilon naught is the vacuum permittivity and p is called the polarization. Polarization is dipole moment per unit volume. So, what is dipole moment and what is polarization? So, in an external electric field the, the if, if, if we have an atom the, the positive core of the atom and the center of the uh, negatively charged electron cloud they are pretty much at the same location. Uh, so, there is no relative displacement between the center of the negatively charged electron cloud and the positively charged nucleus. But if we apply an external electric field then of course, the uh, negatively charged electron cloud uh, will be pulled towards the field and the positively charged can get uh, uh, pushed away. And as a result the center of the uh, negatively charged uh, electron cloud. Uh, won't be at the same location as that of the uh, positively charged uh, uh, nucleus, and so there will be some uh, uh, separation between between the two. So let's say that separation is d. Now, since what we have here is this two two charges separated by distance d, and so that uh, into uh, introduces an effective dipole moment, and so this is for one atom. And once we calculate the dipole moment per unit volume, that is what gives us the polarization. So, what, what, what happens when we have this polarization, uh, uh, polarization? So, let us look at it one by one. So, in the case of vacuum that is when there is no medium uh, we have just the electric field and then the, of course, the polarization is 0 because there is nothing uh, no, no medium to get polarized and in that case D is simply epsilon naught E just proportional to E. Uh, but when there is a medium uh, that is a linear medium and uh, a linear medium is essentially uh, <coughs> defined by uh, that when the applied field strength is not very strong then every medium just behaves as a linear medium and what that means is that when we have a, an external electric field which is not so strong uh, and there is a medium then of course, this electron cloud gets displaced from the nucleus uh, by distance d, but 
uh, and of course there is a, then uh, 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 there is a restoring restoring force uh, uh, from the uh, from from the charges, and this restoring force is is simply proportional to the displacement d. Uh, so so this polarization is basically proportional to the electric field. That is p is epsilon naught chi one e. Uh, so so when the applied field is not very strong, uh, the this displacement and hence the polarization is just proportional to the applied electric field and the sky 1 uh, is called the uh, uh, linear susceptibility and in this case the displacement uh, is given by which is epsilon naught e plus p now that we can write as epsilon naught e plus epsilon naught chi 1 e. Uh, so, the sky 1 is the linear susceptibility. Uh, now, in the case of non-linear medium uh, which is uh, which essentially means that the applied field strength is very strong. Uh, uh, then this uh, the this this electron cloud uh, gets displaced from the uh, positively charged nucleus by a much larger uh, amount than uh, when the field was not so strong, and as a result, the restoring force on the electron uh, is is no longer just proportional to the displacement d, but it is also uh, proportional to the d square and so on. And, and as a result the polarization uh, is, is uh, which was earlier just proportional to d and hence e, uh, now this polarization is also proportional to e square and e cubed and so on. Uh, this, these, these, these terms we can also write as p1, p2, p3, p1 is the uh, linear polarization, p2 is the second order nonlinear polarization, p3 is the third order nonlinear polarization and so on. Chi 1 is the uh, 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 susceptibility, chi 2 is the second order susceptibility and chi 3 is, is the third order susceptibility and so on. Uh, this we can also write this is the p 1 is the linear and then this p 2, p 3 and so on that we can also uh, that we can write as the non-linear polarization. So, if this is the polarization the, the electric uh, the, the, the electric displacement vector that can be written as d equal to epsilon naught e plus p and so that is epsilon naught e and uh, epsilon naught chi 1 e that is the first term, second, third and so on and the chi 2, chi 3 this is, these are the second order and third order susceptibility and so on. So, so whether a medium behaves as a non-linear medium or linear medium all depends on the, the applied, <coughs> applied electric field. So, the field is strong enough then the medium will start behaving as a, uh, a non-linear medium. It also of course depends on what is the strength of chi 2 and chi 3 that is the uh, these uh, higher order susceptibilities. So, some, some a medium having very high chi 2 will start behaving uh, as a nonlinear medium at a much lower field than a medium uh, that does not have uh, that high chi 2. So, uh, so this is the, uh, the this is how we get the, uh, uh, the this is how the polarization becomes dependent on the 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 second order and third order in the field. <coughs> Okay, so uh, uh, this was about how the polarization gets introduced. Now, since we are talking about fields, we also need to talk about how the field propagates inside the uh, uh, in, inside the nonlinear medium. So, let's take a simplistic uh, uh, the, the most simple situation that's the rho equal to zero, j equal to zero, and the material is magnetically isotropic. That is b equal to mu naught h. Now, in this case, that's the uh, Maxwell set of Maxwell's equation. And now here we can take up this one and we can write this as uh, del cross del cross C. I am just taking the del cross on each side. So, this mu naught uh, del by del T and then we have del cross H. Now, this del cross H is del D del T. So, this becomes minus mu naught del square del T square D. Um, <coughs> and uh, so, this is D we know that is epsilon naught E plus P. So, I am just we can just rewrite it like this. Uh, this del cross del cross e we can use a vector identity and we can write it as del del dot e minus del square e plus uh, mu naught epsilon naught uh, this we are putting together mu naught epsilon naught and then e and then we put this uh, term on this side and so what's rem what remains on this side is uh, minus mu naught del 2 p by del t 2. So, just rewriting it. Uh, now, we know that this del dot e is 0 for nonlinear optics for uh, sorry for linear optics, but for nonlinear optics it is actually not 0, but it is negligible. Uh, uh, so, without actually getting into going into the details of uh, you know how, how this comes out, uh, I mean uh, for the details one can actually look at this, this, this is a very uh, nice book on nonlinear optics by uh, Robert Boyd, this is a third edition as well uh, uh, 
for for this so uh, so for the kind of intensities we would we would be interested even within nonlinear optics the still dot e is zero and therefore uh, we can write this one as just del two e and now since we can change the signs here uh, this becomes minus one over c square del two e by del t two plus mu naught del two p by del t two uh, so this is the wave equation inside a nonlinear medium. And of course, when p is equal to 0, we get the vacuum equation. So, this del 2 e minus 1 over c square del 2 e by del 2 del t 2 equal to 0, that is a regular wave equation that we are all familiar with. So, but, but, but when it is inside a medium which has a polarization, uh, that is the wave equation. Okay. So, this is the wave equation inside a nonlinear medium. We just want to write it in a slightly different manner uh, as well. So, let us see how we can do that. Uh, so, we, we can write this polarization that is the total polarization inside the nonlinear medium as the, uh, the linear part and the nonlinear part. This nonlinear part will have the second order, third order and all the higher order terms. So, we can just simply write it as a linear part and the nonlinear part. Uh, so, uh, we can this then write this one as uh, the left hand side remains as it is and the right hand side we can write as mu naught del 2, p 1, p nonlinear by del t 2. Uh, this p 1 uh, we are bringing on to the this side. So, this 1 over c square. So, we have e from here and then p 1 by epsilon naught uh, from there. So, here we have used that the uh, this e, e naught the relation between e naught uh, epsilon naught mu naught and c square. So, and this mu naught uh, del 2 uh, by del t 2 p and l that remains on uh, this side. This p 1 uh, we know that is equal to epsilon naught chi 1 e. So, that is how we write it and that is how the epsilon naught gets uh, cancelled. So, that is what we get on this side. Uh, this e plus chi 1 e that is 1 plus chi 1 that 1 plus chi 1 uh, is equal to n square and that n is the refractive index of the medium. So, this then we can write as del 2 e minus n square by c square del 2 e by del t 2 uh, and that is equal to mu naught del 2 by del t 2 p n l. Uh, so, so, that is the wave equation uh, inside the uh, nonlinear medium and where n is the refractive index of the medium. So, so of course, with the total polarization is 0, we just get the vacuum equation. If we have only, if we are in the linear optics regime, that means we have only have the first order uh, polarization, then the wave equation we have is del 2 e is uh, del 2 e minus uh, n square by c square del 2 e by del 2 2 equal to 0. But when we go into the nonlinear optical regime, then that is the wave equation that one has to follow. So, this, this, this and this contains all the, uh, all the uh, nonlinear optical terms. So, that is the wave equation inside the nonlinear medium and depending on uh, whether we are looking at the second order effect or third order effect. Uh, we will have the appropriate expression for p nonlinear over here. Okay, so now let us look at some very basic second order nonlinear optical effect and the sum and frequency generation are uh, some of the very basics. So, so now we will work just with the scalar field, let us say the real, uh, real uh, scalar electric field and let us say it just consists of two uh, different frequencies. So, just this, this is just a scalar field and of, of two, uh, two, two monochromatic frequencies. So, E t is E 1 e to the minus i omega 1 t plus E 2 e to the minus i omega t. We are also taking the complex conjugate parts. So, if this is the, if this is the electric field and if we have a medium uh, that has the uh, second order uh, polarization, then the second order polarization uh, we know that is given by epsilon naught chi 2 e square t. And so, if we write it for this field, what we see is that epsilon naught chi 2 and then we have this epsilon naught e 1 uh, minus i omega t plus e 2 uh, e minus i omega, uh, i omega 2 t and this, this is a complex uh, conjugate part and then the square of that. So, if we expand it of course, we will get 16 terms. So, I am writing it one by one. Uh, so, these are the 16 terms. So, first of all we collect terms that without any uh, time dependence and that we will have E 1 E 1 star plus E 2 E 2 star. So, and there is a 2 here. So, there is 4, four terms here. Uh, then all the other terms will have this epsilon naught chi 2 here and then um, uh, 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 we have uh, 2 here, uh, 2 here and 2 here. So, that is 6 and the 6 complex conjugate parts. So, 6 plus 6 is 12 uh, plus 4 here. So, that is a total of 16 terms. 
when we expand it. Uh, so these are these these do not have any frequency dependence, but these terms do have frequency dependence. So now uh, now 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 let's look at these terms again. Uh, we we need to see here that the incoming electric field, the applied electric field, had only two frequencies, omega one and omega two. But the polarization that got induced in the inside the medium uh, that contains newer frequencies as well. For example, now here we have in these terms we have 2 omega 1, 2 omega 2. So, uh, although the incoming field had only omega 1, that actually through second order uh, nonlinear effect it actually generates field at 2 omega 1 and 2 omega 2, and this is called second harmonic generation. So, uh, it is like if we come in with a red field, uh, uh, red light, uh, then we can actually uh, generate blue from there. So, that is the second harmonic uh, generation. Now, this, this, this term represents the sum uh, frequency generation because we had omega 1, omega 2, but now we have a field that has a frequency omega 1 plus omega 2. Similarly, we have difference frequency generation that means we have a field that has frequency omega 1 minus omega 2. So, although we had just omega 1 and omega 2, but it just because the medium has the second order uh, uh, nonlinear uh, susceptibility and, and as a result second order uh, polarization, we, we can produce all these different fields. Uh, the fields that are at twice the frequency, the field that are uh, the sum of the frequencies and the field that is at the difference frequency as well. Okay. So, so this is this is the second order nonlinear uh, effect. This is a very basic, and 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 this uh, this is what we get when we have just uh, uh, two monochromatic frequencies in the incoming field. Uh, now, uh, uh, what are the ways in which uh, such fields can actually be generated? For example, I just want to look at the difference frequency generation, uh, uh, and what are the schemes by which it can be done. So, this is one scheme for example, we have a nonlinear medium that has chi 2 that is a second order uh, uh, susceptibility. Now, if we come in with two fields just, just like what we did uh, in, in this example that we come in with the field that has two frequencies omega 1 and omega 2 then we can uh, actually produce a field uh, omega 3 which is at omega 1 minus omega 2 that is a difference frequency. Uh, but uh, of course, here we have uh, the two fields are present, so it is very efficient, but we can also do this frequency uh, difference frequency generation in such a scheme where we come in with just a monochromatic field omega 1. Uh, but since in quantum mechanics within field quantization, we have this the concept of vacuum modes. So, so all the vacuum modes are actually present. That means the vacuum modes at omega 2 and omega 3, all the frequencies actually the vacuum mode is present. So, here because of chi 2 there is a finite probability that we can generate fields at omega 2 and as well as fields uh, at omega 1 minus omega 2. This omega could be anything, this omega 3 can be uh, anything as well except that this omega 3 has to uh, ha have this uh, relation that uh, omega 3 is equal to omega 1 minus omega 2 in order to conserve energy. So, in order to generate this uh, difference frequency, we need not have two fields. If we do have two fields, then it's very efficient. But even if just one field is present, we can still generate a uh, field at this difference frequency omega 1 minus omega 2. Um, uh, uh, and of course, this uh, process will actually be very, very in inefficient. Uh, so, in, in an actual uh, atomic system, uh, uh, we will have that the atom absorbs this field at omega 1 and in turn, uh, emits uh, uh, two fields one at omega 2 and other one at omega 3. Of course, it could be any omega 2, but omega 3 has to have this relation that it is equal to omega 1 minus omega 2. And in fact, such a process is actually called parametric down conversion. So, in, in although it is a simple as simple as this difference frequency generation, uh, what we have here is that uh, a medium absorbs one photon and, and, and emits uh, two two different photons uh, at, at, at frequency omega 2 and omega 3 and they have a relation like this. Uh, <clears throat> so, this parametric uh, uh, of this parametric down conversion this refers to the fact that the energy remains conserved uh, during the process and th there are uh, non parametric processes as well which are non uh, energy conserving. But uh, we, 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 we want to be studying this parametric down conversion in detail 
because uh, this is one process that through different frequency generation scheme it actually produces a two photon field that means here we it, the the system uh, takes in one photon and these uh, uh, then emits uh, two photons so that's a uh, uh, a two photon state and uh, later we find that this two photon state is also uh, represents a two photon entangled state that we will do uh, after uh, I mean that aspect of this field we will we'll, we'll, uh, look at in detail after a few lecture. But right now we just want to use uh, what is produced by parametric down conversion as, as an example of a two photon field. And, and, and through, through that we want to study how uh, two photon coherence, two photon interference uh, and, and these effects how, how it all actually works. Uh, so we will stop here. Thank you.